Good evening. My name is Valerie Arvizu, and I'm the principal here at Aragon High School. And I'd like to welcome you to Aragon High School Family Night or Family Orientation for Fall 2021. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. This will be the English version of our presentation tonight. Uh, if you are looking for Spanish language, we're more than happy to accommodate in um, with our Spanish language um, recording of the same presentation. This evening, I'd like to talk a lot about Aragon Cares. Um, at Aragon High School, we care about your students. Um, the Aragon Cares values um, outline our campus community agreement uh, regarding both behavioral expectations for students during learning and school-based activities, both virtually and on campus. We also know that we are stronger together and that collaboration across the community makes Aragon a special place. In the end, we believe that community is the answer. So a large portion of our presentation tonight will talk about Aragon Cares and, and the different ways that students and families can connect, can achieve, respect, engage, and show spirit as part of the Aragon community and family. So the first part of our presentation this evening is to talk about Aragon Cares and the connections uh, that we uh, would love for all of our students to have. And part of this, a large part of it, is building meaningful relationships. This is what we encourage students to do in order to connect to the school. So you'll notice with each of our our portions of Aragon Cares, they're broken up into how students can demonstrate these values by, um, in this case, connecting in the classroom, connecting on campus, in the community, and online. So it's important to know who your people are while you're here with us. Um, Here's a brief overview of our administrative team. Once again, my name is Valerie Arbizu. I'm the principal here at Aragon High School. I'm going into my second year here, and I am lucky, lucky, lucky to have a fantastic team working with me as well. Um, they are pictured here in order. Uh, Nicole Ellens Martin, who has been um, an Aragon teacher, and she is going into her fourth year as um, assistant principal here. Um, in the middle there is Mr. Juan Flores. He is going into his third year here at Aragon High School and comes to us from the Los Angeles area. And then rounding out our team is Lisa Nagendron, who is an assistant principal um, who has been here actually at Aragon going into her sixth year here. Uh, so we're very, very lucky um, to have this team. Along with our team is Donna Krause. She is our dean. Um, I don't have a photo of her, but if you get a call from her, she is officially our dean. Uh, going into her second year here at Aragon, and she's been around the district for about 15, maybe 20 years. Um, she's been longstanding in our district. We're happy to have her here. Uh, additionally, uh, it's important for our families to connect to their students' counselors. So this year, we made a shift in order to establish uh, longer-term connections between counselors and their students and their students' families. So we used to have our counselors attached to a particular grade level. This year we are shifting and they will have an alphabet um, assigned to them along with an advisor. So our school counselors are credentialed counselors. Uh, they are working through the AXA model of working through with students uh, and they are broken up this way. You can see Miss Leah Sanguinetti there working with students' last names beginning with A through FI and she is supported by uh, advisor Heather Stretch. Uh, last names Fig through LE is with Mr. Alicott, and he is supported with Ms. Angela Castillo. Our third counselor here, Ms. Josephine Ho, is working with students' last name LI through ROO. She is supported by Patty Bruce. And finally, last names ROS through Z will be working with Dr. Aline Cervantes, uh, and she is supported by Ms. Rachel Leota. So in the counseling department, uh, there are two different roles. So our school counselors, those first names with Ms. Sanguinetti, Mr. Alicott, Ms. Poe, and Dr. Cervantes, uh, they focus on academics and they will work with students um, 
and their schedules and their classes, uh, supporting their academic progress, helping students create a four-year plan, but they go beyond that. So this is not guidance like it used to be when I was in high school. Um, they're also working very closely with students to support their social and emotional support um, and uh, helping them navigate the college and career application process and, and making sure that they are career ready. Um, supporting them are our grade level advisors. So this was that second group of folks who are um, in support of our counselors and they will assist with referring students to resources or activities. They're there to support students with check-ins. Uh, they can answer general questions and they can assist with making appointments with the counselor. Uh, they help us with outreach also into a number of our support programs. Um, there, it's a wonderful resource to have here. Additionally, we have Ms. Lori Tezak. She is our college and career advisor. We also have Ms. Caroline, Caroline Mawala. She is our financial aid and scholarship advisor. And then we, we've had a shift in personnel. So Ms. O'Brien has taken a position at another school in the district. So we are in the process of hiring a new career technical education coordinator, uh, hopefully soon to be, um, we'll be going through that innovation, the, in, excuse me, um, the interview process quickly so we can make sure that we're supporting our students there as well. Additionally, um, it's important to know how counselors are supporting kids. So they focus a lot on first that transition from middle school to high school. Uh, new this year is also supporting kids and making that transition from online learning to in-person learning. We help our students learn to advocate for themselves. It's really important over these four years while they're in high school that they learn how to um, how to ask questions, how to stand up for themselves, how to make sure that they're getting everything that they need um, while they still have time to practice. Uh, we help them with academic planning to make sure that they're taking all of the classes they need to take to make it to their next goal. So whether that is college or if it's trade school, if they're going into the military, if they're still undecided, that's fine. We want to make sure that our students have as many doors open to them as possible as they finish their four years here with us at Aragon High School. We also help students with figuring out how to study best at home. Uh, sometimes kids need a little coaching with that. Um, and, and so our counselors are very good with that. We help them with career planning. So we do have, uh, again, with our College and Career Center, um, we do have resources available to help students figure out like what is that next step? What might they want to do with their lives um, as, they, as they graduate and move off into the the real world, if you will. And then at the end of the day, we're also there to help celebrate those successes, however big or small they might be. Um, if it's a success for your student, we want to celebrate with them. We also offer a number of school-based mental health resources. Uh, and our goal there is to provide support and teach skills so that students are able to access and benefit from their educational program. So it's not Therapy as you would go out and find a therapist. Our goal is to make sure that students have what they need in order to participate fully in their academic program. Our wellness center is fully staffed with licensed individuals. Miss Jill is our um, wellness lead on campus and she works with Mr. Max and Miss Araceli in the wellness center in room 224. And then we're also lucky to have Miss Nikki on campus. She works primarily with our key program, um, but it's fantastic that we have four full-time people uh, to provide school-based mental health resources for our students. Their services include uh, short-term individual sessions. Uh, it includes group counseling, depending on the needs and trends of our students. Uh, it includes drop-in crisis support that's available for any student. In the event that our students need a little bit more, um, they are uh, they do support us in completing mental health assessments, making referrals to community partners, and then assisting um, across the curriculum with uh, student outreach and presentations in different programs and classes. We do have some wellness drop-in times. This is also included on our student um, Canvas program so they can see who's available and when. So moving on to the A in CARES, this is all about achieve. 
uh, achievement. So this is where we are helping students establish goals and take steps to reach them. Again, in the classroom, how do you achieve on campus? How are our students achieving in the community? And then how are they achieving online? We do offer different academic supports. Um, for instance, we offer flex time, and that is um, a program we offer 35 minutes twice a week for students to uh, be able to go into uh, their classes and get extra assistance with tutoring, um, some review sessions, participate in uh, makeup assignments, take care of a test that they may need to complete. Um, and it does give our students some time to practice time management and figure out you know, how will they, uh, how will they use that time? Um, we also offer after school tutoring. We are lucky, lucky that we will have a full time beginning this year student success coordinator who is helping us um, create after school tutoring programs, peer tutoring programs, and assisting with more flex time programs for students if they need a little bit more. Uh, so we do have a peer tutoring program. Uh, that will be taking place soon. And then for students who need more, uh, we have a couple different support classes depending on different areas of need um, for our students. We do have a district-wide homework policy and it's based in equity and access, student health and wellness, um, hopefully finding some school life balance and then uh, ensuring that the quality of instruction is there versus the quantity of assignments. So we're going quality over quantity. Um, to support that, we do have homework-free holidays. That includes Thanksgiving, uh, winter break, spring break, and summer break should be homework-free. Uh, we do require that homework be limited to a maximum of 15% of a student's grade, that there are well-defined expectations for group homework if there are any of those assignments there. And this does apply to all of our classes, including college prep classes, uh, IB classes, um, like at Cappuccino. Again, this is district-wide. It applies to AP and honors courses as well. And it's really important that our teachers are communicating the approximate times that assignments should take so that students can, can gauge um, how they're doing. It is also important to a student's achievement to be sure that they are uh, submitting their, their own work and participating um, in our academic integrity policy. So um, we will have conversations with students if it appears that they are plagiarizing or copying other work, um, if they are cheating on a test or a different assignment, if they are just submitting someone else's work completely, um, if they are in a world language class and they are using translation services, or if they are digitally distributing work to assist others. It's really important for our teachers to have an opportunity to assess students for where they really are in their learning. Um, so the academic integrity policy is there to support students in reminding them that we do need to see where they are individually with their work um, and to submit their own work. If they're struggling, we want to help them. This brings us to the R of Aragon Cares, and that is respect. Um, that comes down to appreciating our diversity, our environment, and our resources here at Aragon. You can see what this looks like in the classroom, on campus, in the community, and online. Again, these are our behavioral expectations for students with regard to respect. We do have information um, that you are welcome to take a look at in our digital red book. This is on our website. Uh, we are still updating it as we are still kind of going back and forth between um, what it looks like first to be completely in person. And then last year we revised it for our online environment. And now we are kind of meshing all of those things together um, just because we know that we may be living in a slightly different world where maybe this isn't the only time we'll have to worry about pandemic work. Fingers crossed that this is it. But we do want to make sure that we're never um, caught in a situation where we're not prepared. So um, be aware that there will be some continued adjustments there. 
We do have a district-wide dress code. Um, we've tried to distill it to be the simplest thing possible. It is not gender specific. This is for all people, all students, all staff, um, all visitors to campus are required to uh, participate in this dress code policy. We do ask that uh, torsos and undergarments be covered, uh, that they do not convey inappropriate or offensive messages. We do want everybody to wear shoes while they're on campus. Um, we don't want anybody to get hurt there. Uh, we do ask that students and visitors not wear anything that um, has a brand or a message or a symbol that references substances that includes alcohol or drugs, et cetera. And then um, if you're wearing jewelry or clothing or shoes, um, we do wanna make sure that they don't threaten uh, or cause injury. We are following a universal mask wearing policy here at Aragon High School for now. Um, this is in compliance with the California Department of Public Health and CDC recommendations. The first thing, uh, masks are required for everyone indoors. So as students walk in, they need to put their mask on. As parents come to visit, if you were inside our building, you have to be wearing a mask at all times. Um, outdoors, masks are optional. Uh, we still suggest that students wear their masks because there's 1,650 students out there at lunchtime. After they finish their lunch, it's not an awful idea to, to continue wearing your mask, um, but it is optional. Uh, this third image here, uh, the masks that we are asking students to wear, they must cover the face from the nose to the chin uh, without having any gaps. So we do have masks available for students if they are wearing something that does not do that. Uh, which brings us to our very last image here. Um, again, the, the mask needs to be closed. We are not allowing um, students to wear gaiters as they do not, those are the pieces of fabric that can be like worn around the neck and then brought up over their nose. The issue is that it does not also completely cover their chin. Um, and then there are some masks that are available on the market um, that have a vent. Um, so you may see like a little round vent on the mask and those are also not okay because it kind of defeats the purpose to have a vent in your mask. The whole idea is to um, keep our aerosols and droplets to ourselves while we're inside to maintain the health and safety of everyone inside our classrooms and our building. Aragon Cares, this is the E in Cares for Engage. Uh, this is a plea uh, and a, an expectation that all of our students be present and involved. And that does include you too. We want you present. We want you involved um, in things that are happening on our classroom. But first, this is how we uh, support our students in engaging in the classroom, um, on campus, in the community, and online. Communication is the most important thing that I think the school can do for our families. So um, at, here at Aragon, we have shifted our communication just a little bit um, coming into this year. We are continuing to use A-Town. Um, that is our student center in Canvas. So our students will know exactly what's going on at all times. Uh, we also have our website. We maintain that almost on a daily basis. So if there's information on the website, chances are very good that it is new and vetted. Um, we also will be sending out emails and texts uh, to parents and families and students and staff through Aries Parent Square. Um, we will be doing some dialers here or there, um, but we've shifted from um, the previous ARIES communication software to Parent Square is their, their new chosen item. So watch out for information that way. Our PTSO also puts out a newsletter. Um, so you are welcome to opt into that as well. Uh, they will have much more of a parent perspective on how to navigate the school. Um, and it's a lot of work and we really appreciate our families putting that together for us. There are different ways for students or parents to access student information as well. So you don't have to wait for us to push, to push information out to you. You can create an account in ARIES. Um, that portal allows you to see your students' attendance right away. It allows you to see their six-week grades um, along with any teacher or staff messages attached to those grades. And then you can also print out unofficial transcripts there. Through Canvas, 
uh, you can see current live grades, not those formal, you know, six week marks. You can see the full grade as they're happening. Please keep in mind that teachers are not updating grades every day. Sometimes it may take a few weeks for the grade to be updated. Um, other items that are available there on Canvas are course events. You can see the assignments that your student has, custom notifications. So teachers can send out notifications through Canvas and they also post their syllabus and they use the email there on Canvas. And finally, we offer anonymous alerts for all of our students, but families can use it as well. And this is a way for you um, and for our students to report safety concerns about campus or other students, um, things that you might be hearing in an anonymous fashion. Um, it, it has become a really good tool for us to support our kids in different ways. The attendance office. So these are big questions these days. Um, what do you do if your student will be absent or late? So our preference is that you complete the absence reporting form online, um, or you can call our attendance clerk, Ms. Carolyn Patino, um, and her number is here. You can also find it on our website. And then again, still in attendance, um, what happens if your student needs to leave school for an appointment? What do you do? Um, again, you can complete that absence reporting form to let us know if your student has an appointment, or you can call Ms. Patino again, um, and then your student can come by the attendance office to pick up their permit to leave. We do try really hard not to interrupt classes to pull students out for scheduled appointments that you know about. We're happy to do it in the event of an emergency, uh, but we really do want to protect that, um, that instructional time for our teachers. Additionally, one last thing here with attendance. If your child feels sick, please keep them home. Um, we do not always know if it is just a cold or just allergies, or if it is a student who is experiencing COVID-like symptoms. So please do stay home, fill out that absence reporting form and tell us the reason why your student is staying home ill. And if, it, if they are staying home because there's the potential that they are exhibiting COVID-like symptoms, our, uh, our health clerk will get in touch with you and we'll go through the testing protocols um, with you. And we do have different protocols, one for vaccinated students, one for unvaccinated students, but that's really, this is one of the very few times you'll notice a difference between how we work with our students. Um, that's because we have different guidelines based on, um, based on vaccine. We do have a closed campus. Um, so as students are out and about, um, and they are here with us for the day. We want them on campus with us for the day, not down the street at McDonald's, not going home without a pass. So um, if you take a look at this picture, you can see the general guidelines here for our closed campus. That means students have to remain in the boundaries. Right now, um, we are allowing students to eat lunch in the football stadium that is temporarily open um, for additional space during universal mask wearing. And that's just because 1,650 kids in center court is a lot. Um, and we know that there are some students who would prefer to have a little more room. So we do have that space available for them and we do have supervision in that area for now. Um, students are not allowed right now to eat lunch inside the hallways. Drop off. So we are about a week into school and many of you may have noticed that drop off is a thing here. Um, it can be difficult. So please, please make sure that you are dropping your student off in the white zone on Alameda de las Pulgas, or we would love for you to drop them off by um, on Aragon Boulevard because it's right next to a crosswalk and your student can make it across the Alameda safely. Please do not drop off your students in Woodland, uh, on Woodland Drive and families are not allowed up the main driveway really after 7.30. We need to make sure that our, our staff is able to get here um, and park. We need to make sure that our student drivers are able to get into that student lot as well. So please, please make sure as much as possible that you're dropping your child off on the Alameda or at Aragon Boulevard. Um, if you drop your student off in the student lot, um, they can come through and follow this, uh, this little area, but please do not drop them off on Woodland. 
bring them all the way into the parking lot. And please, please watch out for pedestrians as you do that. But we do not have any student drop off um, at the main, in the main office area. Okay. That brings us to the S in CARES. Show spirit. Please be proud, uh, celebrate it. Let's have some fun. Um, this is, there's a lot of good stuff that's going on here at Aragon High School. Uh, these are some different ways that we suggest that students show their spirit and appreciation um, for being an Aragon student, both in the classroom, on campus, in the community, and online. You can find out what's going on here at Aragon High School by checking out our calendar. We do keep that, um, that link updated all the time. Um, and we do that because that's the calendar we use. So I use that, my assistant principals use it, the athletic director, activities director, we're all using um, the calendars that feed into this, um, this website calendar as we're working throughout the day. So it is updated continuously. And you can find that at smuhsd.org slash Aragon High. Additionally, we invite you to participate in some of these events and to support your student in participating in some of these events or all of the events. So starting this week on Friday, we have our Aragon High School Club Fair at lunchtime. Next week, if you have an athlete, uh, that Tuesday is fall sportsmanship night. You do need to attend. September 2nd is back to school night. We'll have information on that coming up pretty quickly. Uh, and that is followed by a minimum day on September 3rd. Uh, Labor Day is on September 6th. So we do have a lovely three-day weekend right after that back to school night. Um, and then we're excited to host um, the fall drama. And then there were none, the mystery. Uh, and then our football game against Hillsdale is November 5th. It will be hosted at Hillsdale. This is our, our traditional game um, here in the district. You could call them our rival, but we love them. And then homecoming dance on November 6th. Fingers crossed that all goes well and we can maintain that. Shifting gears, um, we are incredibly fortunate to have um, a parent group and a community that supports all of the amazing things that make Aragon the school that it is. We cannot do this alone. So the Aragon Excellence Fund is committed to providing more um, for our students. And what that means is more choices, more attention and more inspiration. The Aragon Excellence Fund gives students more of what they want and need to excel. Part of this is more choices uh, in our curricular program. We do, we do receive funds from our district, of course, um, but with the funds that we collect from uh, parent and community and family donations, we are, offer, we are able to supplement our world language program, our computer science program. We use this money to fund our dance program. We offer multivariable calculus with this support. Uh, we have brought in that AP chemistry program, which is huge. Uh, we have a creative writing program. And then just this year, this is brand, brand new. Uh, we're offering agency and social justice. So our Aragon students will learn what it means to uh, to really um, be a positive force in, in their communities and how to do that. And we're lucky that the AEF is funding two sections for that this year. Um, it is a team taught class by two of our very own, uh, Ms. Bessie and Ms. Keene, and they're teaching it like a college style seminar. So both classes are meeting at the same time in the same space with those two teachers and really excited to, to have that opportunity to offer a class like this. Uh, but we could only do it with the support of the AEF and parents like you who are supporting um, who are supporting us. Additionally, um, the AEF helps us with providing more, um, more attention. So again, this helps us fund 
additional class sections and bring some class sizes down in English, math, world history, and biology. So usually with our younger students, uh, we use the funds to, to keep class sizes smaller so your student gets more attention, really, really where they need it. Um, and then it also supports some improvements to campus safety. And more inspiration. So our parent group and the Aragon Excellence Fund and donations from families like you provide uh, a rich classroom experience. So several a couple of years ago, we bought um, new microscopes for biology. Microscopes are expensive. Um, so we were able to do that. Uh, we have also been able to, um, to purchase, doesn't sound fantastic, but sheep brains and pig hearts for our anatomy class. We're also looking at um, cats this coming year um, for our anatomy and physiology class. It also helps purchase yoga mats and a ceramics kiln and upkeep on that and then to fund field trips when we can do those things again. It also allows us to provide academic, um, additional academic and career counseling supports um, beyond what we would be, have been able to with our district allocation. And then it also funds professional development for our teachers. So there's a lot that we're able to do um, with the funding that we receive from the Aragon Excellence Fund. And if you are interested in giving students more, please take a look at aragonfund.org to donate. Um, any amount is welcome and appreciated. Um, and the AEF asks that you be a family that gives what you can. Um, and I personally will thank you on behalf of um, the staff here and our students here for supporting the AEF and allowing us to do more um, with and for your children. That brings us to the end of our presentation. So I will say thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at events as they unfold here over the course of the school year. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a lovely evening and 